Hello, hello, hello. I'm Chris Erickson. I am on the November 3rd official election ballot for the general election. Voting starts around September 20th. You can get your absentee ballot from the town clerk or it might be mailed to you. Now, I am on the ballot for five different offices, but today we're going to talk about the state auditor, auditor of accounts. I'm on the ballot for that. Now, what does the auditor of accounts do? The auditor audits the different agencies in the state, different departments and institutions of their use of state and federal funds. So all these different departments and state institutions and agencies in the state of Vermont are receiving state and federal funds. The auditor audits them to determine if they are using the funds properly. Are the funds being wasted? and what should be done if the funds are being wasted and not being used for their intended use. Well, there's been criticisms of the current auditor, Doug Hoffer, that he's, you know, kind of wasting taxpayer time and money on auditing departments or agencies or institutions in the state that don't need auditing. Now, if you vote for me, I'm going to go after the big money. I'm going to go after the great big money and not waste taxpayers time on auditing teeny amounts of money here and there. For example, Doug Hoffer has a whole page on Medicaid and food stamps. Give me a break. People who receive food stamps receive a couple of dollars a day in food stamps. I mean, they're buying their food at dollar, you know, the dollar stores. They're so, so poor. Why waste your time auditing them? Go after the big money. So it seems to me that poor people are being discriminated against by Doug Hoffer. So I don't know why Democrats like him, and I don't know why some progressives like him. I am on the ballot as a progressive party candidate, and I did receive more progressive party votes than Doug Hoffer. And this is why, like I said, I won't waste money going after poor people. Now, poor people who receive food stamps or Medicaid or aid to dependent children families, families with dependent children, they fill out all these forms, like 18 pages of forms, and they sign under under penalty of perjury that they've told the truth about their financial condition. And they have to list their home and their car and all their expenses, and they have to list their bank accounts under penalty of perjury, which means if they don't state anything correctly, they go to jail. Whereas big institutions like University of Vermont that receive $44 million of funding from the state, they're not signing under penalty of perjury saying that they stated their bank accounts correctly. They could have foreign bank accounts. They could have offshore bank accounts in the Cayman Islands. They could have foreign bank accounts in Switzerland. And in Switzerland, they don't disclose who owns a bank account they put on fictitious business names, and you don't know who owns the money. So the institutions that are receiving millions of dollars from the state of Vermont, your taxpayer dollars, like University of Vermont, don't have to fill out the equivalent of food stamp forms. They don't have to sign under penalty of perjury that they are divulging and um, making transparent all of their bank accounts, foreign bank accounts, endowment funds, etc. So there's this huge disparity between rich and poor. Poor people are grilled, threatened with prison for receiving a few dollars a day of food stamps, enough money to go to a dollar store and buy some canned food. Whereas wealthy people at University of Vermont, where the president of the University of Vermont, I think he gets paid more salary than the president of the United States, at least more salary than the governor of Vermont. What on earth is going on there? What are we paying them taxpayer dollars, $44 million a year for? And then not auditing it. Oh, that's because they're self-auditing. The University of Vermont audits itself. And to make sure that's nice and cozy, they have the current uh, state auditor, Doug Hopper, on their board. Oh, isn't that cute? 
Doggy Hoffer's on the board at UVM, and Dougie Hoffer's on the board that does the auditing of UVM. Isn't that cute? A whole gang of them get together and go, oh, this is swell. We got 44 million bucks. Let's order dinner in. Okay, so I think Dougie Hoffer, Doug Hoffer, is, is a bit of a snake in the grass. And like I said, I got more progressive party votes for me than for him in the primary election. Because I think voters in general, especially low-income voters, are tired of that snake in the grass, Doug Hoffer, who pretends to be a good Democrat, but uh-uh, no, no. Not when he's sitting on some board at University of Vermont that's in charge of self-auditing the University of Vermont. Wow, if taxpayers could all self-audit themselves, Oh, if every single business could self-audit themselves, wouldn't that be a break? Why does the University of Vermont get that break? That's the fox watching the hen house. And to make sure it's all cozy, they've got Dougie Hoffer on their, their auditing board, their self-auditing board. What a bunch of nonsense. All right, let's go on to uh, another issue. Doug Hoffer complains that the state of Vermont is spending too much money on Medicaid and health care. Well, well, well. Okay. Here is what he's missing. Here is where he's totally off course. All of the state auditors should get together and demand that the United States Congress repeal the Bay Doyle Act of 1980. Now I'm going to read a little of this to make sure I'm expressing this to you absolutely clearly. Bay Doyle Act. B-A-Y-H dash D-O-Y-L Act of 1980 passed by the United States Congress. I will repeat that because you need to look this up. B-A-Y-H dash D-O-Y-L-E Act of 1980, the Bay Doyle Act. Congress allows university researchers under the Bay Doyle Act to sell their discoveries for profit even when the research is funded by taxpayer dollars. Many science professors now have corporatized or have started their own biotech companies. When universities discover a new drug, they do the FDA testing themselves. Again, the fox watching the hen house. The taxpayers pay for the research. That's you. You're paying for this research with your taxpayer dollars. But then the researchers sell, researchers sell the, the discoveries for their own profit, and then they profit again selling the drugs they invent back to the taxpayers. Let, let's go over this again. Let's go over it as clearly as I can express it. You pay your federal taxpayer dollars. Now the auditor, the state auditor, has a limited budget to audit the use of state and federal funds, which are used by state department agencies and institutions. That, that's that's where we're closing the gap because we want to have a jurisdiction we want to have a jurisdiction a jurisdiction to to investigate this we want to have jurisdiction to say that if you vote for me for auditor that I will get together with auditors nationwide and make a demand on the United States Congress to repeal the Bay Doyle Act so the jurisdiction is this the state auditor has a limited budget to audit the use of state funds, state taxpayer funds, and federal funds that are used by state departments, agencies, and institutions. That includes Medicaid. Okay, now your federal taxpayer dollars are spent by the United States Congress. They go to the Treasury and then the Congress votes and says, we're gonna give so many dollars to the NIH, the National Institute of Health. Then the NIH, the National Institute of Health, 
hands out federal dollars to different universities for research design and development of new prescription drugs, vaccinations, and medical devices. So let's follow this again because I want to be clear. You pay your federal taxpayer dollars. They go to the Treasury, but then the United States Congress votes to give your money to the NIH National Institute of Health. The NIH, the National Institute of Health, decides to hand out your taxpayer dollars to different universities for and pharmaceutical companies for research design and development of new drugs, vaccinations, and medical devices, like used for heart transplants, medical devices. Okay, so these universities are doing their R&D and the pharmaceutical companies are doing their R&D, their research design and development with your taxpayer dollars. And then when they discover something, they patent it. They own the patent. The researcher, the head researcher, the professor owns the patent. And then because they own the patent, they make a deal with the pharmaceutical companies to manufacture the products, the prescription drugs, vaccinations, and medical devices. And then they sell them worldwide for trillions and trillions of dollars in profit. Why hasn't Congress put a stop to this in 40 years? The Bay Doyle Act was passed in 1980. Why has this gone on for 40 years? Because... The pharmaceutical companies making trillions of dollars in profit, even though you paid for the research, design, and development, these pharmaceutical companies then give political campaign donations through their PACs, through their political action committees, to the incumbent, the current Congress people. So the Congress people in the House of Representatives in the United States Congress and the senators in the United States Congress don't want to vote against or don't want to vote to repeal the Bay Doyle Act because ka-ching, 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 they're getting money in their pockets and their campaign accounts from the political action committees which receive the money from the pharmaceutical corporations. I call this money laundering. Okay, well, Doug Hoffer hasn't spoken up about this. Okay, so th these are just two, two ideas I want you to think about. Again, my name is Chris Erickson. I received more votes than Doug Hoffer on the Progressive Party primary, and I would like you to vote for me in the general election. Remember, voting starts September 20th you can have your you can get your ballot at the clerk's office the clerk will have the ballots on September 18th and absentee voting will start um, you may receive your your ballots in the mail um, and the election is November 3rd so please vote for me Chris Erickson I am on the ballot for a total of five different offices and I would like to be state auditor I think I can do a good job of choosing which agencies need to be audited and which ones don't. And of course, I'm going to speak up against a University of Vermont being self-auditing, which is ridiculous. And I'm going to speak up against the Bay Doyle Act. It needs to be repealed because that will save taxpayers a fortune. Here's why it will save taxpayers a fortune. Again. Your taxpayer dollars went to the Treasury. The U.S. Congress voted to give them to the NIH, the National Institute of Health. They decided to hand them out to different universities, uh, which include pharmaceutical corporations, because the universities are all intertwined with the pharmaceutical corporations. Again, many of the professors at universities now have corporate ties or have started their own biotech companies. Okay, so the taxpayers paying for the research, design, and development, but the professors are patenting, they're getting the legal ownership rights to the discoveries, which include the prescription drugs and the vaccinations 
and the medical devices. Then they're doing their own self-testing rather than the Federal Drug Administration doing the testing. It's all the fox watching the hen house. All right, so the patent, the patent is what we need to focus on. The patent is the ownership certificate of the discoveries. You paid for them. You paid for them to be invented, but the ownership goes to the professor and the biotech companies. They make deals with the big pharmaceutical companies to manufacture these and sell them worldwide for trillions of dollars. Where is your share of the profit? You, the taxpayer, paid for the research, design, and development. Where is your share of the profit? Put your hand out. Put your hand out. Where's your share of the profit? Come on, put your other hand out. You paid for the research, design, and development. Put both your hands out. You paid for the research, design, and development. Where's your share of the profit? Thank you. My name is Chris Erickson. I'm on the ballot for state auditor, auditor of accounts. I'm also on the ballot for other offices. Please vote for me. Thank you very much. And please get out and vote. Thank you. Thank you.